What's up YouTube, Oliver here. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at Quark Express 2018. Um, we'll be looking at the Mac version, although it is available for Windows too. This is a desktop publishing app. It's, it's very similar to something like Adobe InDesign or Serif Page Plus. Basically allows you to create all sorts of print documents and also online and digital documents as well. It's very nice for laying out, for example, if you're creating a brochure which might have multiple pages, it's, it's really nice for, for kind of laying out all of your pages. Um, doing all of your kind of graphical design work. It has a lot of advanced typography tools and some really nice functionality in there. It's a very professional tool. Now Quark Express is trying to compete with InDesign and the unique selling point of Quark is that it is a one-off license as opposed to a monthly subscription fee, um, you know, which does make a big difference. It is actually very affordable as well. They've got a lot of good offers on at the moment. Instead of paying something like £30 a month for InDesign or 50 if you go for the All Apps bundle, you can get the uh, 2018, the full version, £725. But you, if you've got InDesign, Photoshop, Serif Page Plus or any competitive software, they actually do an offer. So for £349, you can get the full license of the 2018 version if you send them a screenshot of your serial number, uh, if you have any of the illegible um, com competing software. If you're a student, you can get this for £69 and also it's £149 for non-profit organisations. So they do have lots of different pricing, um, you know, which is a really good thing to know. Um, obviously, bear in mind the pricing is all correct at the time of this video. Um, however, some of these things may be subject to change. Um, now, Quark Express is a very useful tool. You could use it for all sorts of things. It's, for example, you know, if you're going to use something like Word or Pages, I find they're really complicated. If you're trying to lay out like a hundred-page report or something, if you're a student like me, and you're trying to put tables in there and you know screenshots and images, and you find that your document just jumps all over the place a little bit, and you can't put a table where you want it without everything, and you know you get loads of blank pages where you don't want them, and it's quite confusing and difficult to manage everything. Well, Quark Express makes that so much easier. So you know, any you know, there's so many people could use it. You could use it to design posters or you know newsletters, documents, you can, you know, because there are so many typography tools, you can have text laid out in columns and, you know, adjust all your paragraph settings. So it's, it's really powerful. You could use it if you're a developer. You might want to create user manuals for your software or even for creating things like prototypes. You could use something like Adobe XD to design your screenshots of your app and then you could import the images into Quark and design a nice kind of poster, which you know, shows the screenshots and, you know, yet put extra information with them. And then, you know, you've actually got something that you can kind of show people. You could use it, um, you know, to create something like a CV. So I do, I use my, I manage my CV uh, in Quark. I find it very, very useful to do that. I used to do it in InDesign, um, but I decided to move because InDesign, it does get quite expensive when you're paying that monthly cost all the time and you want something you can keep permanently so you never use, never lose access to it. Um, but honestly, it's, it's a brilliant tool for things like that because you can have some really fancy designs on something like a CV, which is something you really want to show to impress potential employers. You can make it look really good and it's so easy to manage and make changes. It's a brilliant tool. A couple of other great features as well is that you can actually export to HTML documents and iOS and Android apps. Now I haven't had the chance to play about with all of those features, but we'll have a look at some things in this video and I may make a tutorial in future. Do leave a comment if you'd like to see that on how you can use it to create HTML and iOS and Android apps. But it's very interesting that you can use it to create all sorts of digital publications as well as print publications. Okay, well let's have a look at Quark Express 2018 now. Okay, so when you first launch Quark Express, the first thing you're generally presented with is this welcome screen that allows you to create a new project or library. You can choose whether you want layout or digital, your layout to be digital or print. We'll start with the print layout and give it a name, choose your size. You've got various sizes and you can also add your own custom size by specifying a width and height. You can set your default margins you know, how many pages you want, your columns. So for example, you might want to have a three column layout to make like a trifold leaflet, for example, and a certain gutter width, which is uh, the space in, in between the columns. It automatically sets all your guides up. Click on OK and you get this layout. So let's just zoom in a little bit here. OK, so make it fill the screen. Now, I've set my layout up 
to look like this. It's a custom layout. Um, you can basically, I'll go into this in a moment, but if you go to preferences, you can adjust how you want the UI to look. So you can choose different colors uh, and that sort of thing. So I wanted mine to look as, as close to uh, InDesign as I could get it, just because that's what I'm used to. So I've gone to, I mean, and if you've noticed, it's like a floating window layout. So you'll, you just pick these up and all of the kind of toolbars are in their own windows. And I've kind of arranged mine to look like InDesign by putting this bar at the top. By default, it'll be at the bottom um, and customize the colors because it looks a bit nicer with a dark theme. Um, you go into preferences, but we'll have a look at that in a moment. So obviously this is a document you are presented with. Um, let's have a look at the tools you get down the side. So you've got the uh, move tool, there's basically a text box tool, a text linking and unlinking tool, so you can link sort of text boxes and so on together. A picture frame tool, so you just draw out your frame and then navigate to your picture. You've got your rectangle tool, circle tool, and also if you you know click on here, you've got some other shapes. So you've got like your you know your stars, polygons, rounded rectangles, and so on. You have your line tool, your orthogonal line tool, which allows you to create lines rather than just being one straight line. Lines going in different directions, so to speak. You have a pen tool um, and lots of other options there. So you've got to add points and remove points and so on. You've got a freehand sketch tool, the table tool, eyedropper tool, zoom tool, and also the pan tool. So they're your general tools that you'll use down the side. Then on your right hand side, you've got different palettes. So your page manager looks very, very similar to InDesign. Your layers down here, you can create style sheets and paragraph styles that you can save. JavaScript, which is very interesting. There's some samples, but you can actually create your own JavaScript um, automation tools. So for example, you might want to automatically create a mail merge document. You can use their samples, but you can also add your own JavaScript if you're good at knowing how to actually write in JavaScript. So quite handy there. And then your colors. So basically you always get these as your default palette. And then the colors that you use, they are generally specific to that project. Um, so what I mean by that is if you create one project, you add your colors, you then go to a second project, you'll still get the default color palette. Um, and you can add different colors for that. So it's quite handy. So the colors that you choose in your palette always stay with that project. Um, so you can come up to here and you can add a new color. And you've got loads of different color models. This is one of the things for me that beats InDesign because in InDesign, you're generally stuck with a CMYK palette, which is good if you're doing print work because obviously printers generally only use cyan, magenta, yellow, and black cartridges, which is why you generally use a combination of those because it would be true to print. But it is nice, you've got all the different Pantone sets, you've got red, green, blue, hue, saturation, brightness, and so on. Um, so you can even go to, you know, red, green, blue here. This adjusts your brightness. Um, you, know, you can pick a color, you can enter the values, use the sliders, you can even get your hash code there. You can go to spot color, and so on. So, you know, a really nice way of being able to customize your color palette, and you give it a name, so let's just call this, um, pastel yellow and, you know right click you can also duplicate you can you know edit them that kind of thing go back into it and you know choose all sorts of different things you've got loads of um, options there so let's go ahead and add some text so it snaps to the guides that are automatically created if you draw out a text box and let's put some text in We will make it centered. We will go ahead and put the text in the middle of the text box. Let's make it helvetica light. We'll make it a bit bigger. And then you've got options to adjust things like your leading and tracking, so you can adjust, you know, the space in between letters, and obviously the space in between lines. I've only got one line of text, but if you had multiple lines of text, that it adjusts that. You can adjust the number of columns and the space in between the columns. Obviously bold italic underline, you can have different styles like all caps, outline shadow, all that sort of thing. Um, you know, nice huge set of different tools and basically you've got different tabs. So you get home and then you've got character specific things here, um, paragraph tools, um, you know, things you can set up like rules for that, your column flow, tab settings, your text box settings, um, you know, things like your text wrap options and all that. You can adjust your border styles, run around, your space and alignment, your text shading, 
and drop shadows and all that sort of thing so generally whichever you've got whatever you've got selected or tool you've got active all the options will come up here and this changes dynamically depending on what you were trying to do you can also go up to edit and you know you can add things like uh, hyperlinks and underlying styles all sorts of different tools if you go to style and then type style you can also do things like um, you know your underlying your single strike through outline shadow and all that sort of thing you can also go down to change case. You've got uppercase, lowercase, title case. So you've got loads of different options there. Um, you know, as you can see, there's loads of different specific options in the menus up here. Really nice tool though. And then say I want to change that. If I highlight the text and then I click on pastel yellow that I created before. It's pastel yellow. Now say I want to preview that without all the lines and guides. You can use F7. You may have to press the Fn button and press F7. And that basically toggles the guides on and off. So it's a nice way of getting a preview of what it looks like when it's going to be printed out. And then say I want to go ahead and export this. You can go to file. You can, you know, import, export things here. So if we go to export as PDF, you've also got like different things. So you've got like vector graphics, images, EPUB and Kindle format. These are grayed out because you need to have a digital style um, layout, which I'll show you that in just a second. And then you can go to, say, PDF. And basically, if you go to options, very much like InDesign again, all your options down the side here. So you can do things like you know, your hyperlinks can be exported. Um, you can do things like your registration marks can be on and off. You know, if you need trim marks, if you need um, you know, a bit of a bleed, you can put that on, you know, really nice way of being able to, you know, manually adjust how you want it to look. Um, and basically export a custom PDF document, you can choose to open it after export and so on. And you've also got different styles down there. Um, okay, so let's have a quick look at the digital layout and how you can export things as HTML files. So I just come out of this and I'm not going to save it and let's just create a new project. Instead of going to print, we're going to go to digital. The devices, you can also create your own custom, but then there's loads of predefined sizes down here like iPhone 10, Android, desktop. Let's just go with iPhone 10 for now. The size is already put in there for you. Your margin guides have them whatever you want and orientation and so on. If you click OK, you get a document which appears like an iPhone size and then what you can basically do is as before you can add anything you want and when you're ready to export you just go to file and then you're going to go to export as and this time your digital export options oops, are all available there. Say I go to iOS app you then can choose which layouts and then if you go to continue you then put all of your details in here so for example the name of the app, the icon, URLs for your home screen, your help pages even, your device targets, is it going to be iPad, iPhone, Universal, and so on. And then you log in with your sort of your Apple ID and bundle IDs and you obviously have to, if you have an Apple developer account, you can then generate those. Obviously you need to have a paid developer account to publish to the App Store. And you put your certificates and all that kind of thing in there and splash screen images. So really good, um, you know, it's powered by their own App Studio. And then you can build into an app. I'm not going to try this out fully in this video because it's more of an overview, but if you'd like to see a detailed tutorial on how that works, it is possibly something I could have a look at. Um, do let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that in more detail. You can also, as I mentioned before, export as an HTML publication. So if you wanted to create for a web page, the similar sort of thing, you just export it though. There's not really any need to adjust settings. And then you basically get a massive amount of folders and files that automatically are created with your CSS, your fonts, you know, everything that you need is all down there, your HTML, it, it generates some JavaScript for you. Um, obviously it's a blank screen at the moment, so it's pointless opening up, but it even embeds the fonts that you've used. Very handy. You know, if you just want to really quickly, and you're not very experienced with web design, create some sort of page. I wouldn't advise using this if you're going to, you know, just for developing iOS apps and web pages. There are other tools out there, you know, if you're developing an iOS app, you're going to need Xcode and, you know, it's better to be able to do things if you know your programming languages like Meet and, you know, to be able to do things 
a little bit better by hand. But if you've not got a lot of experience in that area and you want to create publication and then you want to have a version for an app and a version for a website and all that, you know, a really easy way of being able to just have the same layout consistent across various different formats. Uh, something else worth pointing out is how pages are managed. So again, very similar to InDesign, you've got your page layout manager here, you've got your masters. If you want to create a new page, you can go right click, insert pages. Say I want to insert two pages here after page one, you can choose where the master is. Now what you can do, by default these will be all underneath each other, but if you want to create a spread, instead of having them all as single pages, you literally just click and drag them next to each other, and then here we've got a spread, which means two pages together, a bit like a magazine style spread, and then the single page underneath, so, you know, really easy to adjust, and you notice how the colours change there. So, you know, really nice way of, of managing your pages and that kind of thing for a multi-page document. Well, I hope I've you know answered all of your questions. Um, this is supposed to be just a fairly basic kind of overview of the software. Um, if you want more information, please leave a comment. I can make videos going into certain features in, in depth. You know, if you want some tutorials on how to use it, do let me know. It's a really nice tool. Highly recommend it. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you know, quite affordable and competitive pricing structures. It's really worth having. Um, you know, it's, it's a lovely tool to have. It's Mac and PC. But as well, all the links will be in the video description. If you have any comments, please do leave a question. If you like the video, please thumbs it up. And for more videos like this coming your way very soon, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.